All right, hello. This is a tutorial on how to create a simple memory hack in C++. There are a few requirements. You will need an application. In this case, we're going to be using Geometry Dash. You will also need a C++ or C compiler. In this case, we're going to be using GCC. And you will need Heat Engine. Ideally, you'd like to have an IDE and some programming experience though it is not 100% necessary for this tutorial. So what does it even mean to create a memory hack in the first place? Essentially, when a game or exe is run, all of its data is copied into RAM, such as the code, variables, etc. And we are going to write an application to modify it. In this example, we are going to write a hack to freeze the attempt counter in the game. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to launch the game and we're also going to launch Cheat Engine. Hook Cheat Engine with Geometry Dash so that it's hooked. And now, in order to freeze the attempt counter, we need to modify the code of the game, essentially. But first, we need to figure out where that code actually is. So the easiest way to do that is by memory scanning in Cheat Engine and using its debugger. So the first thing we're going to do is find the local variable holding our attempt counter. So we are going to scan for our attempts and change them a bit. And rescan. We can do a couple more rescans. This should be somewhat familiar if you've used Cheat Engine, but we're going to take it a few steps further. Okay, we got a few values, but that's alright. We'll toy with one of them and see if it's it. So it's not that one. We'll try the others. Okay, so it's the last one. We need to figure out the code responsible for changing this value. So Cheat Engine conveniently has a, a feature that lets us do that. So if we run it, it'll now show all of the uh, instructions writing to that address. So if we open this up in the disassembler, what we're viewing here is assembly code. And assembly code is essentially machine code in a readable format. The computer does not understand C, C++, Python, or anything like that. It understands this. This, In this case, this is x86 assembly, as I'm running on uh, an Intel CPU on Windows. So this is the instruction here that is editing our attempt counter. Um, this here is not too important. This is just referring to the address our attempts are stored in. This ink instruction means to increase whatever this is pointing to by one. So if we change this to decrement, it'll have a similar effect, but our, rather our attempts will go down. So we're at 11, and we will drop to 10. What we want to do is we want to completely eliminate this instruction so nothing happens. The way you do that is by using the NOP instruction. The NOP instruction is written like this, NOP, and its byte value is 90 in hex. So if we change this, I will copy this first so we don't lose this. If I change this to NOP, you'll see that it will replace the instruction with NOP. The reason why I did this multiple times is because the original instruction Instruction was uh, multiple bytes. If we do this now, the attempt counter is now frozen. It's stuck at 10. So how do we actually implement this into an application? Well, we need to take note of a few things first. So to implement this into an actual application that will do this for us, we need to take note of a couple things. The first thing we need to do is take note of the address of the instruction, which is this. 
and how many bytes we are going to edit. So we're going to open up a notepad document to store this information. The base ad or the address of this is this 20CF12. And the amount of bytes we are going to replace is 6. So now that we have this, we can close out this, uh, close this, and minimize this. And we will keep this in the corner. Alright, so this is now the part where we're actually going to write some code. I do expect you to have some programming experience. You don't need to be that experienced in C or C++ to understand, but some experience would definitely help. So we're first going to create our project. I'm using VS Code. You could use any editor you want, so long as you have a compiler. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is just create our standard C file with our main function and we can get started coding. Okay, so how do we actually write the hack with the information we have? Well, in order to do this uh, on Windows, we're going to be what we're going to be using what's called the Windows application interface. The Windows API contains a ton of functions that let us interact with the operating system, edit processes, and, or do whatever you want, essentially. To use those functions, we need to include the appropriate header, which is windows.h, and we're good to go. So how do we actually edit the memory of geometry dash? First thing we need is we need a handle to the process. A handle is essentially a reference to something. In this case, it will be a handle to the process. So we will define it with the handle keyword and call it process. Now, to actually get a handle to the process, we need what's called process ID. Every process on Windows has an ID attached to it. There are multiple ways to get the ID, such as enumerating through the process is on Windows. But in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to get the process ID through the geometry actual window. Not every process has a window, but in Geometry Dash's case, there is one window attached to it, and it's much easier to do it this way. So the first thing we need to do is we need to define a handle for the window. So we use the hwind keyword, and we will call it window equals. And we're going to use the find window method. The a just refers to the string encoding. So the, there's no class. And the window title is geometry. Next, what we need to do is we need to get the process ID from the window. There is a function called get window thread process ID, so we will call that get window thread process ID. It takes in two arguments. The first one is the window, and the second one is the output, which will store our process ID in. So we're going to create a variable for that, actually, called process ID. A D word is just a 4-byte integer. And we will pass a reference to process ID. So we now have the process ID. We can now obtain the handle to the process by calling a function called open process. So we will say process equals open process. And it takes in three parameters. The first parameter is the type of access we want to have over the object. Um, we want to have full access to the process, so we're just going to use this keyword, process underscore all underscore access. The second is not relevant, and then the third value is the process ID. So now we have a handle to the process, and we can start writing. Okay, so before we can start writing our memory hack, there is one more step we need to do. If we head back over to our notes, you'll we have the offset address of our instructions we want to edit. We have how many bytes you want to edit, but we have this geometry.exe. What does this mean? Geometry.exe is the base module. When an application is loaded into memory, uh, it copies all of its 
required modules, such as all the DLL files in the memory. Typically, the default or the base module is stored at the OX400000 address, written like that. But in the case of Geometry Dash, Geometry Dash uses an anti-cheat technique called ASLR. ASLR is stands for uh, Address Space Light Randomization. What it does is it randomizes the addresses of modules alongside other things and it makes it harder. So we need to figure out the actual address of jumpcrash.exe before we can edit, before we can start editing this instruction. So the way we're going to do that is enumerate through the modules and get the address of the first one, because the first module loaded will always be the base module. So we're going to need to find an array that will load all of the modules or contain all of the loaded modules. So we're going to use H module, modules, and find the system array. And next we're going to use a function called enum process modules to enumerate through all of the modules within jump change. Now before we can do this, we have to include a new header called psapi.h. This will allow us to use this function. Now if we write it out, uh, you'll notice it's here. The first argument is the process, which we have. Next argument is the output. So we're going to store this into modules. The third is just how big modules is. You can use the size of the function. And the last is how many uh, bytes were actually written to modules. So we're going to make an output. This is just an output variable. It's not important, but we need to define it. So we'll pass a reference to it. Now, to get the base address, we simply index the first um, element in modules, which will be geometry.exe. So we're going to define it as an LP void. This is yet again a four byte integer, but it refers to a pointer base and we're going to cast this because this is not a h this is an h module not an lp void or no modules zero so this will store the base address of junk okay so now that we have the base address of the game we can compute where the instruction will be located we just take base and add this now, before we can actually write to it, we need to understand the idea of memory protection. Um, all memory for every process has a protection attribute, which basically says what you can and cannot do with it. Typically, it's either read, write, or execute, or some variation of those. In this case, we're trying to edit code in Geometry Dash. If we look here and we go down here, Sheet Engine will actually tell us the page protection. The page protection by default is execute and read only. You're not meant to write to it because this is code and writing to it would generally cause problems and exploits. So before we can actually before we can actually edit the code, we need to update our page protection. So to, to update the page protection, we call a function called virtual protect x, which will allow us to change the pages protection. The x simply means it's in a separate process, not our process. It takes a few arguments. The first argument is the process. The second argument is the address. So the address will be our base plus our offset, which we have. So we're going to copy this. The next is how many bytes we want to write. So we're only going to do six because um, that's how many bytes we want to write. The next is the new page protection. We're going to give it the execute read write, which means you can essentially do anything with it. And the last one is a variable which will store the old protection on it. This is required and can't be set as null, so we have to pass this in. We'll pass a reference to old, which will just store it. So finally, we can actually write our for the game. So 
we are going to be writing six not bytes to the instruction, which will eliminate the instruction essentially. So we're going to define our code right here. We're going to make a an array, so code, and it's going to be six not bytes in a row, so one, two, three, four, five, six. And we're now going to write that to our memory using a function called write process memory. Write process memory takes in a few parameters as well, the first being process. The next is the address, which we can copy up here. Next is a pointer to the buffer, which is our code, so code. Next is the size of the code, so 6. And the last is irrelevant. And that's all of the code done. Now we'll just give the user some heads up that the program has run. So printf uh, attempt counter frozen. And we can return to. And that's that's the code. So now that we have finished writing our code, the next step is to actually build our code into an executable. So most IDEs have come with a compiler. In my case, since I'm using VS Code, I have to build it manually. So we'll be using G++ for this tutorial. The syntax for G++ is G++, the file, and then the output. So we'll call it hack.exe, and we'll disable it in the warning. And there we go, we now have hack.exe. And we can test it now. So we're going to restart our game because our game contained the modified code from earlier. And we'll relaunch the game. We can close the cheat engine as well, we don't need this anymore. And we don't need this. So we'll relaunch the game and make sure the game behaves as it should. So let's play Stereo Madness. As you can see, the attempts count up normally. But if we run our program hack, we got a message, attempt counter frozen, that's good. We didn't crash or anything. And if we play and look at our attempts, we'll notice our attempts do not change anymore. So that's all for this tutorial. If you found it useful, share and subscribe. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section. I will reply to all of them. And if you'd like to see more tutorials, let me know. I will likely continue this memory hacking series and extend it beyond memory hacks. We'll, perhaps in the next episode, we'll talk about how to actually build this into the game or create a DLL file or a mod menu similar to Mega Hack. That's all for this. Goodbye.